All right, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today is our fourth episode. I believe we're a quarter of the way through the planned uh, initial series that I have. Um, today we're looking at geometry cleanup. So this is gonna be really the first day that we're gonna compare some tools together. You know, the first couple of, of, of sessions have just been general housekeeping type stuff, right? We've talked about the browser and any issues there. We talked about bringing models in and then obviously all the selection stuff and selection is real key. So if you haven't, go back and look at, at that episode. Um, so I'll just go ahead and load in a model here. Go ahead and find our, our model here. Uh, aerospace training, got some stuff in here. Oh, where did it go? Training. You know, it's always a good sign when the CAD team sends you a, a, something that's called broken, uh, but we'll go ahead and bring that in. And I will bring the same file in over on the other side, uh, but remember you can just drag and drop, right? So it's a little easier. Just take that, this parasolid file, my mouse works today, and hit okay. And then you have the same options, right? So all of the options that are over here are over here now. But um, just hit open. Okay, get get out of here. All right, so let's let's focus on the old version first. Um, so when you bring a model in and you want to check CAD, right? Really, the 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 only I say the only way, the really the only way I think. Um, within the classic version is to kind of do this visually, right? So to go and color down at the very bottom by say 2D topology. Um, and if you didn't do this, you would run into a problem when you were gonna say, if you wanted to mid-surface this part, right? Very, very mid-surfaceable. Uh, but if I were to try to select this as a solid, nothing would happen, right? So um, kind of our best option is to look at this kind of 2D topology some of you already maybe even put it in wireframe. Um, and then maybe you even went into this little visualization options tab and turned off shared and was like, oh, okay, well, I see there's some free edges and there shouldn't be free edges in a bound solid. Uh, so maybe that was your process. That's usually was my process. Um, and that is, a, I don't know. It's a very kind of iffy process, but it's what we had. Okay, so looking at this part, especially in the classic interface, the, all of the issues are over here in this little corner. Um, as you kind of zoom in, you start to see there's missing, there's a missing fillet here. Uh, it looks like these are just like little cracks in the model, right? So like a little crack here and a little crack here. Um, and most of us in the classic interface, this is pretty typical what we would just go to the quick edit panel, right? So whether you hit F11 on your keyboard or you went to the Geom quick edit, uh, you had all of your options down here, right? Um, so with this, um, you know, there's splitting, there's unsplitting, there's toggling. So toggling was probably a, a big one that was used. You type in your tolerance, you come and you pick a line. Uh, let's see, I should be able to see toggle this. Couldn't stitch the gap is, is a little too big. So let's change our tolerance point zero one. And then this should work here. All right, so then it toggled. Thank you. Uh, the other option that you have here would have been point replace maybe. So if you looked at this and uh, let me turn the vertices on again. Where is that? I think that's here. Display fixed points. There you go. Uh, so you might've seen this and it's like, okay, well I could easily just you know point replace, point retain type of thing. So that was in the quick edit panel as well. Point replace, point retain. Um, and then these two, you know, issues here could have been with this filler surface within the quick edit panel. I think this would have would have worked, right? So it just looks for bound uh, a loop of, of free edges to close. And then I think probably works down here too. And then you have your option for tangency. Okay. So, you know, add points, replace points, adjust and set, split node to node, we had this nice quick edit panel that had about you know 15 tools that would do a decent amount of the geometry cleanup, right? And if we didn't do it here, we would go 
most likely uh, geometry, edit, surfaces, uh, uh, surface edges, excuse me, um, equivalents, right? If we wanted to do a big kind of uh, uh, type of uh, tolerance, you know, stitching things together, if we had a lot of a lot of free edges. So um, all those other options were in here. But normally you'd go to the quick edit panel. And today is really an investigation of where the hell did my quick edit panel go? Because um, it's we don't have a quick edit panel in, in the class in the newest version anymore. Okay. So um, thank you, old version. Let's go over to the, the new version. Uh, same same place, right? So Remember, if you did want to do the visualization thing that I just did to kind of check, uh, I guess the, the second part you could do within the new GUI is just see, I don't have a solid entity, right? So that might be your first kind of clue to say, well, this isn't a solid. This is just a bunch of surfaces. If it were bound, 99.999% of the time we would have made a solid, but we did it. So that's my first clue. Um, I could come down here to the visualization options at the very bottom of the GUI. And instead of changing, uh, be an automatic, which is change the color state dependent on which tool you're in, uh, you could turn this off and say by topology, and then you'll get a similar type of view. Okay. I'm going to go back to automatic because that's just what it is. And I'm going to go to the geometry ribbon. And because I have this on like half screen, uh, it's a little cut off, but I will kind of swap over here to some of these tools. Maybe I'll make this a little bigger. Okay, perfect. So uh, like I said, the one of the new things that has been added, I guess if we're gonna kind of compare new tools, is we do have what we call a surface repair. So this is a find, review, and fix any geometry errors within your model. So instead of doing the visual option like I showed last time, uh, this is kind of nice to, um, go and what we call validate would be the first thing you do. And these are the things that it's going to check for. Free edges, duplicate slivers, intersection, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And what I see is it found four free edges, right? And yeah, four is a, I wouldn't trust the count on this other than the fact that uh, it's not like each edge is counted, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, um, you know, four free edges, I can say, well, well, why don't you, you know, show me what's going on here. It kind of, does that it'll show you uh, but you can look for edges you know and it finds them here and then you have options for fixing uh you can kind of individually click on them and try to fix you know uh, so it's not able to stitch right that's a pretty big gap to stitch and then this would be your tolerance right so i think we knew we were at like 0 0.01 or something um, and then when i go stitch ooh, control z that is certainly not what we want. Okay, uh, not what I want, but this is a tool, I usually use this just for identifying issues, okay? But, um, so that's kind of nice. That's, that's a little bit of a, a new tool that came in that at least kind of identifies some of the problem areas that you're gonna have. But what I would like to show is, is gonna be a replacement for the quick edit tool is this stitch tool. Okay, under geometry, it's next to split, there's a stitch. And this is actually multifunction, which um, again, we can, we can probably agree on uh, our feelings about this, is that on the left side of this tool is stitch and on the right side of this tool is what we call suppress. Okay, so um, if I go and stitch, uh, this is one of those tools where I do like the, the little video, the built-in help. So, the idea of stitch is going to combine a lot of the features that quick edit just did and a lot of the the things that i just did as well so we have the ability to do point to point replace we have edge to edge replace you can just do a big highlight and do like a self-intersect and, and stitch you can um, do all sorts of different things with stitch okay and then what stitch going into this tool also allows is that a very similar option to the the, the visualization preferences where you can uh, you can say put your your model in uh, wireframe mode right and then turn off shared edges right so you can kind of get that same visualization of uh, just the solid or just the the free edges but again now that we have the surface repair tool that's that's the way to highlight that so I would probably stick with that tool
Okay. Um, even though it doesn't clean up exactly like I want it to. So back in Stitch, like I said, this will do uh, a few things. You know, first thing it'll do is point replace. So I just click and drag, right? So instead of two clicks, I'm going to save you a click. So for every click extra that you have to do in the GUI, just think I've saved you one click because now you just click and drag to like drag and drop a point. Okay. I know. It's a, it's a small thing, but I do what I can. Uh, edge, edge as well, so I can click and drag an edge and close up that gap. Um, okay. The, the stitch, even in the old version we would do this, is can be used for a lot of different things. Um, you know, I could do something silly like this and make a little triangle. Sure, it's, it's stitched, but really that's not what I want. So control Z, undo that. But um, so to fill, to do these two things, right, I would kind of need a filler surface, right? And that's, that's out of the bounds of what stitch can do. Okay. So in order to get to my filler surface, I'm going to go to surfaces. Uh, create surfaces, right? So that would be the, the workflow that we would have here. Uh, we have this nice little patch option, and there is a find within patch, so it will try to find uh, closed loops of, of free edges, essentially. Uh, let's pretend I didn't use that, but um, so the patch tool will allow us, once again, if we um, uh, look, we can uh, click a line and we can also drag over it to kind of review. This is, I haven't released my clicker yet, my mouse, AKA. Uh, and you can kind of review what that patch is going to be. Okay. And then you unclick and then it, it patches. So uh, you can also just go and select a loop of lines. So four clicks here. And then you can come up and say you play or green check mark. Or even your little mouse turns into a little check mark saying like yes to it. That will that will work. Okay. So those were the two tools, well, the major tools that I use within the quick edit um, over there. And all of the tools within the quick edit have a home in the new GUI. It's just not in a single place. So we are working on fixing that. Um, people really like the quick edit tool. I'm kind of okay if it's it's kind of spread out. I do understand that that's kind of annoying, but if I were to offer a solution for that annoyance, what I would offer is that you could make a custom toolbar or a custom ribbon, and you could even come and rename this your quick edit tool. Hey, I'm renaming you. Q quick edit. Pink. And what you would do is you would go and drag and drop. Uh, the tools that you would use into the quick edit. So the surfaces tool is quite nice. Uh, the stitch tool is quite nice. Eh, stitchy. And then the, uh, what other tool? The split tool also has a lot of um, some of the quick edit features in it. Okay, so now I have this quick edit option. Uh, this is kind of nice. And then if you really, really want we have this cool other option to float these custom panels. Okay, so this can now kind of float and exist, you know, in the world that you would like to live in, and you can put it wherever you'd like. Um, so if you are doing a lot of geometry cleanup operations and you have to come back to, uh, say, Stitch all the time, it's essentially just right here. Um, so I think this is kind of cool, and I, obviously not a, a complete replacement of the quick edit panel. But I think this is a, you know, a, a, a decent compromise for now um, while we get things going. Okay, so that was just kind of the intro to geometry cleanup. There's tons of other things that, that, that can be done here. Uh, the defeaturing tools within the new GUI are, I would say, much, much better than the defeaturing tools uh, of the old GUI. So case in point, um, if I were to uh, use some of these, um, Give me one second first. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and make this a solid, so a bounding surface. Um, the defeaturing tools uh, within here are, are infinitely better. Um, Defeature. 
so if I wanted to feature some of these small holes, I would go to the holes tool, uh, find, there's some nice find operations for these holes, and um, you can easily do this on solid geometry now. And when we do mid-surfacing tomorrow, I'll show the, I mean, not tomorrow, next week, we'll, we'll show all this. But the defeaturing tools within the new GUI, um, especially for hole removal, are infinitely better. Um, and uh, a lot of the um, kind of manual work of creating surfaces, splitting, um, is also quite, quite better as well. Okay. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, kind of sign off for this session. Um, as always, we'll see you next week for mid-surfacing. And if you have any questions, I will take those now.